Hey folks, Sean here from visibledark.ca. Welcome to another video. And in this video, um, I actually just thought I would show you this little uh, tip um, trick for some of your image processing. You might actually encounter this, um, possibly. I encounter it once in a while. And it was something that um, was difficult to correct. Um, it took a lot of masking and a lot of uh, different uh, processes in order to try and alleviate the problem. Um, the problem is after you've, um, after you've stacked and combined uh, your images, um, so in this case here, I've uh, combined the uh, H-alpha, the uh, sulfur-2, and the oxygen-3. And I've combined those into a color image. And I've done my DBE, dynamic background extraction, and it worked well. Um, I also did color calibration. And I've done a deconvolution and a linear noise reduction on this. So I've done a number of the initial steps before I would begin stretching the image. Now, the one thing, and I don't know how obvious it is uh, to the viewers, but you'll notice that there's some red or magenta that is appearing in certain parts of the image, uh, most notably up here in this section, and there's some down here as well. If I actually uh, stretch this extreme, do an extreme stretch on this, um, you'll begin to, to see a little more of what, uh, what I'm talking about. So we've got some of that reddish magenta hue going on here, and we've got some there as well. It's not so evident. Um, it's evident there a little bit. It's not so evident in in other parts of the image, like over here and stuff. Um, but it's more evident on this side for sure. Um, now the dynamic background extraction usually takes care of most of that, but there are some cases where um, it may not, and um, you might be in a situation where you need to do some correction uh, to the image in order to achieve this. Now we're all familiar with uh, SCNR for removing green hue from from our images, which works really well. Um, but one thing that you may not be familiar with uh, is using it to remove. Uh, the reddish or magenta hues that sometimes uh, pop up or are uh, present in in your image, and they're not really supposed to be there, and you'd like to you'd like to correct them somehow. So this is this is actually how it's done. Now I should interject that simply using SCNR to remove red isn't going to fix this. Um, that's something I actually tried. If we apply it, uh, we're going to see that it doesn't actually. Uh, make the correction that we want it to make, um, largely because um, it's destroying the red throughout the entire image, which we don't want. Um, that's not what we're trying to, to do. We just want to correct the uh, areas of red or magenta hue that uh, we have the, the small areas in, within the image, uh, we want to correct those. So applying SCNR, SCNR uh, in the, uh, the red mode um, isn't going to work. So what else do we do? Well, this image here, as I said, I've already gone through a number of steps with it to um, bring it to this level and it's been stretched already. So there isn't uh, a lot of point in stretching it more. It um, I could uh, do a slight adjustment on it just to make things a little more obvious for you guys while I'm uh, making this uh, adjustment to the reddish and the hue to, to remove it. So you can definitely see it there. And um, we've got some great details going on in here and uh, we'll, need to, we'll need to do some more work on this um, image in order to bring it to a finished result, of course. Um, and uh, that will involve uh, a number of other steps, which I won't cover in this video because that's not what this video is about. Um, we're just concentrating on removing this uh, red or, or magenta hues that uh, are popping up in some parts of the image. So what we're going to do is this. This is something that I discovered uh, can be done and it works. It's pretty simple to do and it works really effective. Um, so let me just make a duplicate of this, first of all 
because I want to show you a before and after so that it really hits home as to um, how well this works. And we'll work on the after image here. We'll leave this one as the before. So the first thing we're going to do is invert this image. So we're going to go to process, all processes, all processes, and we're going to click invert. Once we've done inversion, you're going to see that all of the reddish magenta areas, they look green. They actually have turned a, a bit of green, a greenish color. And you can see it around the stars too, actually. If you zoom in, you can see the greenish hue around the stars. So by inverting it, we've changed that red magenta to a green, um, which would correspond on the color wheel. The opposite of red is green. So um, this actually makes some sense. Now, we can actually use SCNR uh, set for green average neutral. And we can use that to remove the green from the inverted image by simply dropping SCNR onto it. And if we watch closely here, you'll see that it changes right away. In fact, a lot of the image changed. There was a lot of, um, of that red magenta hue throughout the image, and it's completely changed at this point. If we go back, we can see the difference that uh, adding it made. So taking out all the green, and remember the green in the inverted image is the red magenta in the original image. So this actually, we'll just uh, bring it forward again so that uh, the SCNR green is applied. So applying the SCNR uh, green to the inverted image actually removes all that, all that hue that we were dealing with, the green hue. And in removing the green hue, if we go back and invert the image again, we end up with this which is a striking difference in terms of color quality compared to the original. We can see that all of the red magenta is gone, even from around the stars. It's no longer present in those areas. So if we just back out here, and I can show you this is the before, and this is the after. And that's a huge difference in helping to color correct your image. Now, is this a color correction method? I don't know if I would call it that. Um, this isn't to say that you would use this um, in place of color correction, absolutely not. Um, this is simply just a trick that seems to work when all else fails. And I've ran into this a few times myself with some images where uh, the data, um, after I go through the various steps of, of uh, um, calibrating and combining and um, doing my dynamic background extraction and doing my color calibration, uh, doing my deconvolution, doing my linear noise reduction, and then I stretch it. I get to the point of stretching the image and I stretch it and I start to see um, this situation occur where um, I'm getting this red magenta hue uh, throughout the image. Now, um, a lot of times people get this and they're familiar, probably more familiar with the green, the greenish hue that happens and that's very easy to apply SCNR to the actual image itself without inverting it to remove the green. Um, you got to, of course, be careful when you apply this. Um, you don't want to apply the uh, the SCNR uh, too early in the processing stage. It's something that's best left for later on. But uh, when you're ready to make some corrections to the image and make it look a lot better uh, by fixing some of these problems, this is definitely uh, a, a nice little um, tip trick to try that will be quite effective in removing any of the red or magenta hues that um, exist within your image that uh, that you know aren't supposed to be there and um, are not making it look its best. Um, and you can see the difference here. The this is the again this is the before, and this is the after. So there's a there's a huge difference between these two images. And this is going to be a lot. This this um, image here that we've corrected is going to be a lot easier to work with in terms of continuing on in processing, doing some color saturation and some curves and uh, different uh, steps that we're going to undertake before we call it finished. So I hope that this is a helpful little tip trick for some people out there that are uh, dealing with a similar situation that uh, that I am. I appreciate everyone watching. 
Thank you for subscribing and welcome to all the new subscribers and thank you to all the existing subscribers that have followed along um, on my channel here. I really appreciate your support and uh, you watching and um, hopefully everyone is getting some clear skies. I know I haven't been getting a lot of clear skies lately. It's been mostly cloud and uh, we're even getting some snow in the forecast now so that's not great. I was hoping to do some more testing but I did. I was able to do some imaging in October, and I was able to capture um, NGC 7822, which I did a previous video on uh, processing it, and um, that turned out pretty good. Um, I also was able to capture data for the Pac-Man Nebula, NGC 281, and that one also turned out uh, very nice, I think. I got a lot of uh, good details, inclu including these block globu glob globules. I always have trouble saying that for some reason. <laughs> um, and uh, that one turned out really nice, I thought. And my latest one that I did was um, the uh, Heart Nebula. And uh, some of you might have seen this posted on uh, various Facebook uh, uh, groups, um, as well as uh, on my Facebook itself. Um, but uh, this one here turned out pretty good as well. I wasn't actually completely thrilled with it entirely. It took me quite a long time to process. I spent over a week processing it and probably did about 14 or more um, iterations of it. And uh, I ended up sort of um, um, coming to terms with the fact that I wasn't going to be able to get much more out of the data than I already have at this point. And um, the appearance, uh, although I'm not like completely thrilled with it, it actually, it's still, a, it's still a good image in that. Um, I just, I'm, I'm my own worst critic, I think, as a lot of us probably are. And uh, I always striving for perfection and, and better. And um, that, that may or may not be possible. So sometimes you got to sit back and just accept that, uh, you know, the, for this, uh, this particular round, this is it and uh, maybe try again uh, next year and uh, improve on it so that's what I've been working on and uh, hopefully I get some more clear skies and can do some more uh, imaging I've got some uh, targets lined up and I've got some ideas for future videos but the weather is really hampering things uh, in terms of making that possible so I'm sort of riding out uh, the the cloud and the the snow now and uh, seeing uh, when we're going to get a clear break that I can actually uh, do some more imaging. I was hoping to image with the L-Pro uh, filter uh, some more, the Optolong L-Pro um, around New Moon, but that didn't work out because of the weather. So we're headed into New Moon now, or sorry, uh, Full Moon, and um, I'm going to have to switch that over probably to the L-Enhance filter and uh, do some uh, work with that on and I've got some ideas for that as well but I was actually doing um, I was able to get initially um, before just before new moon some data on the shark nebula which was kind of neat uh, using the L pro it's a very faint um, nebula uh, but I, it, it needs a lot more data I, I think I only got about eight or nine hours and it probably needs 20 or 25 hours to really make it pop so I'm gonna have to add to that uh, maybe next month if uh, weather cooperates around new moon and I can use the L pro filter with the QHY 168c okay folks um, again thank you all for watching thank you for tuning in I appreciate it and please, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe and click the notification button for future videos. And we will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone, and clear skies to you.